Hello. Uh, okay. Seems like Alberto is uh, his connection might is uh, off. Right? Can everybody hear me? Can can hear? All right. Okay. All right. If you can hear, can you uh, please type "can" uh, on the chat? Yeah, can can you? All right. Okay. Okay. All right. We'll just give him a minute or two and uh, oh, see if. Uh, All right, there he is, he's back. Hello oh. again. Okay, welcome Hello. back. Well, I think his connection is not that good today. Professor Alberto, we can't hear you. Hello. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, while he's away, let me uh, do a share screen about the, the actual event itself. All right, you can go to albertoabrsm.com. I'm back again. Can you hear me now? Yes. yes. Okay, sorry for inconvenience. Uh, honestly, I don't know what happened, but now everything seems, seems to be fine. Okay, so uh, I uh, repeat a bit what I was saying because I don't want to lose words. So what I was saying is this, uh, in the <clears throat> 50s, in the 60s, Many pianists believe that because harpsichord has no dynamic, no possibility to change the sound and the touch, that Baroque that that kind of mechanical, regular sound, flat sound. And that's why many pianists, especially in the past, used to perform Baroque music in that way, in a very mechanical way, setting the metronome from the beginning to the end, without dynamic, without pedal, without touch, without change of any duration, with all notes played in the same way. Now we know that that's not the right approach. First of all, because we cannot really imitate the sound of the harpsichord on the piano. But second of all, because actually that was not the way to play Bach on the harpsichord. That's what they believed. They didn't have the necessary historical knowledge, but now we have. What I mean when I say historical knowledge, we mean that back then there were many let me open the gallery. Okay, I want to see all of you. Today, music, as we know, is not only in the mu in the score, but it's also in treatises. I want to show you one of the most important to understand back and actually the one we should know. Today, I will show you a lot of books. This is written by C. P. E. Bach, one of the son of Johann Sebastian Bach, who became famous not only for his music, but for his big book <laughs> i have the english copy here in english is he say on the true art of playing keyboard instrument where he talks among other things about his back te father's teaching style Johann sebastian back teaching style where he talks about ornaments diminution and at the very end of this book after disquisition about theory and chords and harmonies and ornaments and so on the last part it's probably the most important. The arrival is how to improvise, how to improvise a fantasia, actually. For those composers, improvisation was essential. Uh, I already said the last time, and I can tell you again, uh, Bach, but also Mozart, also Beethoven, also Chopin, also Liszt. 
they were mostly improvisers and also composer and also performer, of course. So again, we have to rediscover this skill to improvise. Another thing to prove what I'm saying, today we show many books. A very new book, <laughs> Bach and the Art of Improvisation, Volume 1. In this book, you can find really a lot about the, um, how to improvise in Bach style, how to study counterpoint, choral, basso continuo, and many other things in order to get into improvisation, Baroque improvisation. We have to know all these things if you want to understand about Bach. So just to play something, the main point is this. It's true that harpsichord has no dynamic, has no different with the touch. But what was wrong in the knowledge of pianists back then, because they didn't know treaties and books is this, is the idea of duration of the notes. Today, when we study a scale, when we study something, often we start with a metronome, and the first thing we set is the regular speed. That's actually wrong. That's not the way to start a piece. That's not the way to approach music. On the harpsichord, an harpsichord player back then would never play, for example, a scale in this mechanical way. But first of all, with different fingering, but the finger now is not that important, but with a direction and with articulation. Then, as I also say in the preview, the our main articulation of the harpsichord was the not legato, not the legato, which is not staccato. This is the legato. This is the not legato. There are many ways to play not legato. Chord. And the staccato is even shorter. Now. And the point is, in every piece, we find all these different articulations, not only one. So let me improvise for you a short cadence. I'm playing in B flat because the piece I'm going to show you is in B flat. Simple things, B flat major, so tonic. Sub dominant, E flat major. F major, dominant. And then tonic again. Now, let's play in a more Baroque style, in a more, let's say, improvisatory style. This is the backbones of the music I'm going to play. And to tell, I will talk so you can understand what I'm doing. I start with the tonic and some variation on the tonic chord. Let's go to the subdominant. Go back to tonic. Now go to the dominant. I mix different styles, not only Baroque style, there's also classical style and so on. When I improvise, I mix all styles. This is the main point. Be able to improvise, be able to think in terms of structures, tonic, dominant, and then develop when we play, like more or less when we talk. You may have noticed I didn't play following the metronome. All, all notes have a different duration, and that's the way to, in a way, compensate lack of dynamic and so on. A chord should never have notes with the same duration. Some notes are longer, some notes are shorter, some notes are more important, other notes are less important. Some notes can be dissonances, which means more important, other not consonances. So I have to know all these things in order to understand Bach. Something else we should know about Bach is this. Actually, when we play Bach on the piano, for us, Bach is probably the oldest composer we study. Bach was born in 1685, then also Scarlatti, same year, also Haydn. And then we move forward. We move to the classic era, romantic era, and so on. But actually, when we study harpsichord, Bach is not the youngest composer, but in a way, we study many other composers before Bach in the Renaissance era, early, class, early Baroque era, then Bach, and then we move on, of course. 
So in a way, back in the middle, why this approach is uh, very useful? Because actually Bach, which is a, a German late Baroque composer, we can say, or second half of Baroque, Baroque, Baroque era, in his music, it contained a lot, a lot of um, references from Italian Baroque music, from German Baroque music, from French Baroque music. You may know the title French Suite, for example. Uh, in all, all these things, overall, you know, composers before uh, this era, uh, French composers like Couperin, like Rameau, like Danglebert, Italian composers like Frescobaldi, and so on. So if we know all these composers before him, it's much better to understand his style. Coming back to uh, this prelude and fugue from um, Well Tempered Clavier, I want to shortly explain you today. Uh, it's from grade eight, uh, uh, group A, A1. Uh, once again, in a few minutes, I cannot talk about Bach. It would take at least two hours, the complete explanation of the piece. But for now, I just want to simulate your curiosity. Let's start with the introduction. In the introduction of your RBRSM uh, book, all introduction actually are pretty nice, but we have to say here and there, there's some mistake. It's written the title, Prelude and Fugue, uh, with Temperate Clavier. Um, the title refers to the type of tuning that would make it possible to play in all keys, equal temperament or something close to it. That's another big mistake. There was no equal temperament back then. There's another common misunderstanding of the pianists used to do. Uh, please do not believe me, make your research. Also Wikipedia says the same, but make your research, do not believe me. Um, in the back time, the main intention was be able to play in all keys like Bach is showing, but in the same time, preserve differences among keys preserve the difference between C major, D major, E major, F major. These keys are different. If you use the equal temperament, which is the modern temperament we have on the piano, all keys are the same, which means all tones, all half tones are the same. In one octave at 12 half tones, all half tones are exactly the same step. In back time, there were different kinds of temperaments, which means different kinds of tuning the instrument. And there were some a temperament that allow you to play in all major and minor keys, but in the same time keep the difference, which, I, which means that some half tone or some tone was lo longer, larger, there was more space, other was shorter. Some fifth was perfectly pure, other fifth was perfect but a little bit flat. There were different. I tuned my heart figure in, in this way, I don't know if you can hear it because it takes really years to, to feel it. This is one fifth B flat F, it's quite pure, it's perfect. There are no beats, but if I play another fifth, this is C, G. In fact, it's very stable. C, G, there are some movement. Some fifths are stable, other fifths have some movement. So keys, in a way, preserve the irregularity, which is their main character characteristic. You can understand with the equal temperament, we could play notes in all keys without changing anything. This is what we do actually in the 20th century. 20th century era is the era of the equal temperament, which was born, was theorized many years before Bach, but was born in a way in the second half of the 19th century, but not in Bach time. Again, on the piano, there is a way to still keep these differences. I cannot show you now, step by step, but it's possible. But Please uh, do not think that Bach in a well-tempered keyboard means equal temperament. That's a historical mistake. Well-tempered keyboard means keyboard tempered, so tuned in the proper way, but not equal temperament. Let's go now to the music. Prelude and fugue. What is a prelude? What is a fugue? Well, you can Google them. Prelude is a piece that introduced something else and was usually in an improvisatory style. How about the one I have in front of me? And so on. You should know where this piece comes from. This piece actually, in a way, resembles the Italian toccata. Who was the master of Italian toccata? 
This guy. Fresco Baldi. Who wrote? Toccatas. Toccata in Italian. Toccata was an improvisatory composition. Usually in the re Renaissance era, late Renaissance, there was more Toccata than Prelude. And he wrote a very interesting introduction where he explains everything about this music. Let me show you something for you. From this. Probably you don't have many chance to listen to Renaissance music play on the harpsichord. And play just the beginning, this one. There are actually a few chords, but in the introduction, Frescobaldi explained how to play this music. What's written is this. First of all, it's like an improvisation. Then he says, we have not to respect the bad lines. We have to be free according to the affect of the music. And then we can fill intervals and so on. Here we are in E minor. So the first chord is this. Then the second one. After I read the introduction, I understand the music and so on. I would never play only as written. This is just a draft. I would play maybe this way. the beginning. There are many ways to play this piece, but for sure not the way in which it's written here. From Couperin, then we also know that Prelude is an improvisatory composition and should not be played following the bar. So I think I already provide you enough information to say that if we start and set a metronome and we play everything in a regular way, that's a very wrong starting point. So how to access it? First of all, understanding functions, and then possibly learning how to improvise, because that's actually what we have supposed, what we're supposed to do. Here in B flat major. So the main chord, at least I should understand the main chord. Then we go to the sixth, I'm going down. And then I go down again. Then I go down again. Then I go back to B flat. So in this four bar, first four bars, I just have a descending scale with this chord. And then Bach made this beautiful decoration to this chord. Or something. Once again, there are, there's not only one way to play, but if I understand the chords and overall their function, I understand how to play. Structure. This is the main one, and then I follow the main structure. And so on. When we play on the piano, of course, we have touch, dynamic. So this is uh, actually, it's a pity to hear sometimes Baroque music on the piano always with the same sound just because the harpsichord has no way to change dynamic. Please do not work in this way. Piano has dynamic, piano has pedal, piano has way to change the touch. That's the main point. We have to use them. We have to find an interesting and good way to use them, not, of course, like in romantic music, but that's part of the sound of the piano, so we have to use them. Do not cut the possibility of the piano playing everything flat. That's uh, actually a bad way to imitate the sound of the harpsichord on the piano. And by the way, the point is not to imitate the sound, but to play the music in the proper way. Let me show something about left hand only, it will be more clear. <laughs> You 
you may notice, I'm not playing all notes in the same way and not with the same duration and not with the same speed. All these things make back music very interesting. Just something about the next fast note. It's written this. And many times I heard students practice in this way, mechanically, metronome. Again, that's not the way. It's an ornament, it's a scale. So. Or maybe when we improvise first of all we never play on time we just think in terms of i have to connect a scale to play something like this i make variation i think to connect two points like i'm doing here Very, very short example to show that this music cannot be learned since the first stage, never learned mechanically with the metronome, but learned with the functions in improvisatory style, understanding what we are doing and really improvising because there's nothing else than a written improvisation. Fugue, about fugue. Fugue is uh, an even bigger problem in a way. Uh, what is a fugue? Fugue is a very, complex composition. If the prelude is the improvisatory style, the free one, the fugue is based on many strict rules. How to understand fugue? I know that in the ABR exam, we have um, this fugue basically. In the past, in the other exams, we don't have inventions or other preluded fugue, but it's really not possible to understand a fugue if, first of all, we don't know how to play inventions, two parts, three parts, and then maybe some other few from back. Most part of times I saw students with enormous problem in understanding the few. And then I asked them, did you ever practice invention? They say no, because they're not in, some, in the exam. I know it's not in the exam, they, they must make a selection, but we as teacher have to guide them in the proper way. Before few, I will not say all invention, but at least most part of two parts invention and then three parts invention should be studied. But in the proper way, of course, not mechanical, not just reading the notes, in the way I'm showing you today, understanding. You may know that invention number one, for example. And then number four in D minor. That's very important. This is two parts, and then there are three parts, and then, then maybe we have a chance to understand a few. We have to develop basically in our mind the skill to control two, three, or more voices all together, but keeping them independent. Otherwise, the problem is voices disappear. It's like to watch a 3D movie without 3D glasses. I see everything flat. Actually, no, there are many layers, and this is what I should keep in the field. Uh, in the fugue, there are many structures. There's the subject, there's the uh, answer, there's the counter subject, and overall is matter of counterpoint. So these are the at least the essential parts to know if we want to access fugue. And when I say to know, I mean be able to write down counterpoint, be able to write down a subject and answer. That's the way to access this fugue. About this, um, the beginning of the fugue. I just want to show something. I play the beginning, which is the subject. And then we go to the next part. Also here, you can see I'm not playing mechanically with a metronome and notes have no the same duration. Often in Bach, when we have only one line, there are a sort of two voices, one voice, is the second one first, and then one first, two, and then one again. So, why I'm saying this, there is a big jump. 
an interval of six. Interval of six is very big, bigger than a third, than a fourth, than a second. And this is another secret we should learn from Bach. Not all intervals are the same. And when we play, we should make a difference. This is the main difference between instrumental music and vocal music. On the piano, on a keyboard, it's very easy to play a second, a fifth, octave, tenth. I can play any kind of interval at any speed, according to my technique. But then try to sing, try to sing an octave or a tenth at that speed, you would see it's impossible. Second, third is fine. But when the interval becomes bigger, I must slow down. If I try to sing at the same speed, I sound like I sound like an ambulance. It's really not possible to do this. Back music, especially fugues in this case, are written in vocal style. Vocal style means that intervals are not the same. So if I play I'm reading right notes, but I'm not playing any music. I'm not understanding any music. And this is the subject. And then I leave you with a curiosity. Let's see if you can find the answer. That's just for you, of course. Because we need to know all these things if we want to understand the few. This is the subject. In the second, uh, in the second line, the, um, the answer comes in, and the answer is transposed. Sometimes the transposition is the same, sometimes it's not, it's modified. Why? Let's try to discover it. This is the question I will leave you for today. Subject. Answer. The first interval is not the same anymore. At the beginning of the subject, we were second. At the beginning of the answer, we are a third. Think always there are rules we have to know. There's always a need. Bach that did something because of some specific music need, not because he liked to do in this way or he liked to do in that way. That's not the right approach to the music. If we are able to understand all this background about improvisation, about counterpoint, about also instrument, but with the instrument, I can help you. Um, and of course, as I showed you last time about function, harmonic function, well, we have good chance to access the beauty of this music. For today, it's all. Is there any question? Uh, yes. Uh, uh, but actually, I uh, want to ask you, uh, what will we be covered in the workshop, uh, the upcoming workshop in uh, August? Uh, well, we'll cover this one because this is included in the grade eight. So this will be in the last day, I guess, of the workshop because it's at the end of the grade eight. Grade Grade A group one, uh, yeah, grade eight will be in the last day of the workshop and we will need a lot of time. And I can also tell you, I can guarantee you, if as I hope there will be many questions and we'll be unable to complete the total, uh, the, the, all the piece of the work, especially this one and maybe also Mozart, then we can make some extra session or I can make some other videos for you because as we said, I will offer the complete explanation of the all pieces, but I understand this piece may be very tough, may be very difficult. So uh, one or two hours may, may not be enough. Anyway, I'll be able to cover it in, in, in any case. But I will cover both prelude and fugue, getting into details, provide all answers, uh, playing on the pianos, on the harpsichord, that's not that important for now. But I think for all of you, the harpsichord sound and the harpsichord approach is very new. So I think I can give you more by playing on the harpsichord, by showing what we can do on the harpsichord. Okay, uh, what I'm going to do is I would like to show the participant our website for the workshop. 
Then after that, they will probably have some question and answer time. Okay, let me share screen. Okay, so this is our workshop's website. It's albertoabrsm.com. So the events uh, will be starting in August. Uh, grade one, to, okay. Uh, right here, if you scroll down. Oh, why is it white color here? Hmm, some important information is not shown here. I had to go back to the website. Uh, okay, what happened is uh, the, the website is, well, uh, the workshop is on August 3rd and 4th. Malaysian time will be 9.30 to 12.30. Yeah, August 3rd and 4th. That will be grade 1 to 5. The price actually is 99 US dollar. And uh, grade six to eight is on August 10 and 11. The price is also 99 US dollar. But if you would like to join all the events, both of them, the price actually uh, all four days, the, the, the event is cost only 159, 159. I don't know why the website something is uh, wrong here. Uh, the, the price and purchasing information are all gone. Mm, however, if you are up, uh, oh, okay, right here. If you, if you click book now, this is the payment portal. Uh, it shows that uh, the ABRSM the package number one, which is uh, August 3rd and 4th. 9.30 to 12.30 a.m. So the price is 99 and uh, package number two is grade six to eight on August the 10th and 11. And uh, if you want to have more pocket package, the discount price is uh, 159. So that means uh, the 159 one will cover both set of workshop. So it's all four days, grade one, two, grade eight. All right. Uh, do you all have any question? Any question about today or in general, if you'd like to ask me any question? About my baby, maybe? <laughs> uh, yeah, please type your question in the chat. I leave also you with another curiosity. Mozart and Haydn were actually not piano players, they were harpsichord players. They were born with a harpsichord. Then in a certain period of their life, they access piano, but, but, but the early piano actually was an harpsichord with dynamics, has really nothing to do with the modern piano. This is another big misunderstanding. Everyone knows that Bach play harpsichord, but when we talk about Mozart and Haydn, we think, well, they play piano. No, that's totally wrong. They play, please, once again, do not believe me, make your research. Mozart and Haydn play harpsichord. They play harpsichord, they have a harpsichord technique, which means not the modern piano technique, and their music actually should be approached in this way. Then they also play, as I said, early piano or forte piano. But early piano and forte piano are brothers of harpsichord, but very, very, very far from the modern piano, which is a very different instrument, regardless of the name. So quite important to have this kind of historical approach. Mozart. Sorry, wrong key. I'm sorry you cannot play the notes because the touch is very different, but you, you could see it. But that's actually the way we should approach this music. And then, of course, we can export this technique on the piano, on the modern piano. Modern piano 
actually comes from partially from this instrument. So whether it's, if we cannot play mo a harpsichord with a modern piano technique, I'm going to destroy it. But of course I can play modern piano with harpsichord technique. That's very useful. It works really greatly. And you will see that the sound of the piano change because piano is a very sensitive instrument, but we have to know the proper technique. Otherwise the risk is we play this music with the wrong technique, with the wrong approach. So there's not many things to say in that case, but I can show you the proper technique to play um, harpsichord music or early classical music on the modern piano, which consists basically on fingers. Okay. All right, for those who, of you who have decided to book for the workshop, uh, there is a, a link, a payment portal that I just uh, type into the chat. You can just click on it and check it out and uh, pay for it. And later on, I will uh, update the website again. Something's wrong in the, it, it, uh, with the website. All right, okay, but it will be fixed soon enough. Alberto, are you still here? Yeah, I'm here. I'm here. All right. Okay. Uh, since I, uh, we don't have any more questions, so I guess we can call it a day for today. Okay. Uh, Sunny, do you have anything to say? Uh, okay, participant, if you are coming for the training, you will have the recording for two years. Yeah, you can keep the recording. So anytime you, let's just say, if even you don't have a student's, let's say grade five for now, maybe next year you will have. So it's good you can review again. And for me, I, I say it's like a teacher's development, even though if I don't have a grade eight student, it's like a development for myself also. Then I will learn, oh yeah, okay, grade eight. Uh, I learned from Professor Alberto, then also I can apply it to myself, um, I can, practice for myself also before also I apply it to my teaching. So I think it's a very good um, time. Professor Alberto will be around in this August 3rd, 4th, and then after that will be in the 10th and the 11th, that he will cover pieces by pieces. Maybe some of the pieces uh, may take longer time because it's, the, uh, it's com more complex. Probably. So <laughs> yeah, let's say like the bark, right? It's a more complex. Yeah, probably, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah exactly yes i learned i learned a lot i'll really be help be happy to help and i want to tell to all participants do not worry i, I do not want to scare you <laughs> i'm not saying it's something impossible or difficult it is possible everyone can do that with the right knowledge we can access Bach, mozart that's my wish that's what i'm going to provide that's my hope actually so i'll do my best but do not be scared oh my god so many things to know yeah of course music has many things to know that's why it's music music is not easy but i can tell you how we can get it how we can access this knowledge mm -hmm. that's my task yeah thank you so much i'm looking forward for learning the bug especially the bug it's not my expertise <laughs> Yeah. All right. So any more questions about uh, today or the training? No, no questions. If you have any questions, you can also message uh, Colin Chu in the messengers and he can answer. He can answer you personally. Okay. Well, thank you so much for your time. Okay. Oh, okay. When is the cutoff date, Colin? Uh, July 31st. July 31st. After that, the price will be going up, is it? Yeah, mm, after July 31st. All right. All right. Thank you so much. I hope that we see all of you and the teachers training. Thank you, Professor Alberto, for your time today. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Okay. Bye-bye, everybody. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye.